Hello and welcome back to Hands on History. My name is Rachel Goldberg and I'm the programs coordinator at the Manassas Museum. We've been bringing you each week these little short activities um, focused on local history and they're good for the whole family as children might need some assistance uh, with some of them and that is the case with today's. So adults, uh, grab your kids and let's get to making some Civil War era hardtack, which is a delicious, um, some might say, food item that was important to the Civil War efforts. And we all know how important Manassas was in the Civil War. And in fact, the site that the museum sits on today was used as a camp for soldiers on both the Union and Confederate sides. So I imagine that if we did an architectural, an architectural, an archeological dig, and dug up underneath the museum, we'd find lots of delicious hardtack still intact for us to snack on today. So that said, hardtack is something that was used by explorers, it was used by soldiers, uh, anyone who needed a shelf stable, hearty food who didn't have access to, regular access to food. So soldiers during the Civil War had rationed occasionally, they would get food um, or fruit and other um, things like molasses, uh, maybe even butter or pork, salt pork. Um, but, but hardtack was something that they could really uh, count on and really sink their teeth into. So hardtack is a flour-based cracker-like substance uh, that comes by its name, honestly. Uh, hardtack is also known as uh, worm castles because they often got infested with maggots and other kinds of worms um, that I understand were killed off as soon as you dunked your hardtack into your coffee. Uh, or they were also known as tooth dullers. So you can decide how hard to make your hardtack today. I think that with all of that, we're gonna dive on in. Before I get started, I just wanna say that if you if you try your hand at making hardtack, use the comments below and let us know how yours came out and how delicious it was. So what you're gonna need to make your hardtack today, you're gonna need a surface, you'll need some flour. We're, we're using roughly two and a half cups of flour. You'll need roughly a cup of water to go with your two and a half cups of flour. And we're going to use a little bit of salt. Uh, during the Civil War, I can't imagine that anyone making hardtack was measuring things out unless it was being factory made. It's just a matter of combining your water and your flour until it gets to the right consistency. So you'll also need a rolling pin. You'll need um, something to dock or poke holes in your hardtack. Um, I'm using a wooden skewer. Then you'll also need a baking sheet. Uh, it can be lined or not lined. Mine's lined with parchment paper. And you can use a spatula to stir your dough concoction together, or you can just use your hands. Um, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna just start by pouring our flour into the bowl. So again, if you're at home, this is about two and a half cups, or you can just see how much it takes. Two and a half cups to about one cup of water should make somewhere between 10 and 13 three by three inch crackers. And that's how big they were during the Civil War. They were about three inches by three inches. So I'm now going to add just a little bit of salt. And then we're gonna mix that all up. Just mix up the salt and the flour. And now, without any further ado, we're gonna start adding our water. Now we wanna add our water slowly so that the flour comes together. So I'm just gonna add a little bit, it's less than half of it, stir that in. And you can see it's starting to chunk up. Add a little bit more and stir that in until it starts to come together. You can see it's starting to come together now. Make sure to get all the flour. We're gonna add in the rest of the water and just bring it all together. 
If your dough ends up being too sticky, you can add more flour. And if it ends up being too dry, you can add more water. This is looking pretty good. Yep, it's coming together nicely. And we've used a spatula. You know, I think kids might have a lot of fun using their hands instead of a spatula. This is actually a little sticky, so I'm gonna add a little more flour. All right, so we're just adding a little bit more flour to this. Uh, just because it looks a little too sticky to roll out. So we're gonna add a little bit more flour and get that to come together. Once that comes together, we will dump it onto our surface and roll it out. Looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and flour my surface just so we, so that the hardtack doesn't stick to the surface as we roll it out. So flowering my surface a bit. And now we're going to take our dough ball, dump it out onto our floured surface. Ooh, my floured hands are slippery. Still a little sticky. So still a little touch sticky, so I'm gonna add little flour and knead it together. So we're gonna put it down on our floured surface. I'm going to flour my rolling pin just a little bit. And then we're gonna roll this out to somewhere between a half an inch and a quarter of an inch. Uh, we're just gonna roll it to whatever shape it comes to, and then we'll take it from there. So there we go. Not quite as sticky as it looked. Now I am not a professional baker, as you can tell. I'm sure there are plenty of people out there saying, oh no, Rachel, you'd get much better results if you'd roll it this way or that way. <laughs> But alas, I am just trying to get this dough to about a quarter of an inch. And I'm showing all of you that it doesn't have to be perfect. It's hard tack. So if you wanted to make gourmet hard tack, you could add some molasses to the dough. You could add some gingerbread seasoning to the dough. That was sometimes done for some special holiday treats but ours is just a plain flour, salt, and water cracker. And even the salt is only semi-authentic. So, there we are at about a quarter of an inch thick. And I think that is going to do it for us. And so the next thing to do is this is where uh, kids, you'll need an adult helper. Um, we're going to cut the dough into our squares. So again, traditional hardtack was three inches by three inches. And so we are going to attempt to make our hardtack approximately three inches by three inches as well. We'll start by cutting off the edges to give ourselves a nice rectangle to start from, and then we'll cut our crackers from that rectangle. If you don't mind about messy edges, you can just cut the whole thing into whatever size. So we are going to cut off the round edges so that we have a rectangle to start from. And we're just using a little bit of pressure along the outside edges. Again, it does not have to be perfect. The only time I'm thinking that hardtack crackers were ever perfectly square was when they were made in a factory. So we are going to just cut this into approximate thirds. And then we'll do it again the other way. 
These are a little bit smaller than three by three, but they will still be delicious. And by delicious, I mean they will sustain us in camp. We're gonna use a skewer to poke holes in our um, dough. And it, the poking holes is important because it allows moisture to escape. It also makes them more stable um, we're gonna move them to our baking sheet before we poke the holes in them so that the dough doesn't just fall apart. So this, these um, hard tack will not expand. Uh, so you can put them pretty close to one another on the sheet. Now we're gonna take our skewer and poke holes through them. This is, I think, what gives them their cracker look. Um, so we poke holes in them. Go ahead and poke holes in all of your crackers. You can poke as many holes or as few holes as you want. You wanna make sure that your holes go all the way through. And if you wanna do a fancy design, you can do that. Or if you just wanna make them look like crackers, you can do that. So the next thing you're gonna do is put your hardtack in the oven at around 350, 375, and bake it in the oven for about 30 minutes. You can keep an eye on it. The trick that I found with hardtack is that it doesn't really change color when it bakes in the oven. Um, it just hardens. So just keep an eye on your hardtack. Like I said, give it about 30 minutes and take it out and give it the touch test um, when it's a little bit cool. When you take your hardtack out of the oven, you will probably notice that it hasn't changed much in color or shape or height. Um, it, it might brown a little bit here and there, uh, but it really starts to look more like a cracker when you take it out of the oven. So at this point, um, you can test it for hardness and see if it is, you can tell these are authentic hardtack. They're nice and hard. Uh, we'll really need to use a rock to break that up so we can eat it. If you want to pretend like it's Civil War holiday in camp, you can try spreading a little molasses on your hardtack, or they also might have spread butter if they had any butter. So give that a try. Let us know how you liked your hardtack. Also, let us know in the comments if there's something else that you'd like us to explore with hands-on history. Thanks so much for joining us again today.